Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The paper I am presenting is about FPSO conversion. When we are talking about conversion, the major conversion which is happening in the marine sector is FPSO conversion. Uh, it's no wonder that we have got two papers today. I will be dealing with the design aspects of the FPSO conversion and uh, Mr. Krishna Gomar, he will be dealing with uh, the practical aspects, the building aspects of the FPSO conversion. So we will get a clear idea about this FPSO conversions. Let me just give you the different types of uh, floating production installations. One is monohull uh, floating production storage and offloading vessel, that is the FPSO. Then comes the semi-submersible floating production systems or semi-submersible floating production units. Spar boys, spar boys are the latest uh, um, type of uh, oil uh, exploration uh, platforms. Then tension leg platforms. So these are the floating production installations for oil exploration. The first category before the FPSO was the FSO are commonly used in oil fields where it is not possible or efficient to lay a pipeline to the shore, especially when you are going into the deep, uh, deep shore uh, pipe I mean, exploration. The production platform will transfer the oil to the FSO where it will be stored until a tanker arrives and connects to the FSO to offload it. Let's have a look on the FSO oil field. It looks like this. Now you have got a uh, a floating drilling platform and uh, 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 production storage and offloading vessel nearby. From the uh, floating drilling platform, your drill bits will be going down into the, into the oil well. From where, when you are digging due to the high pressure of the oil, the oil will return back to the line on to the, to the uh, production storage and offloading vessel. Now, as you are m doing more and more exploration, the pressure will decrease. So in that case, you have to pump in water into the oil wells so that water will go down and due to the density of the oil, it will come up and then uh, come up by pressure to the, to the production storage and offloading vessel. Now once uh, it is stored in the uh, st uh, production storage and offloading vessel, um, shuttle tankers will come and it will be taken to the shore. Now during that stage, there will be processing will be done. Now, you see 40 to 50 percentage is waste water. You, you don't need to take all the waste water to the shore. So you can do the first uh, stage of processing in the FPSO itself. Now, this is the tandem offloading. You can see the uh, FPSO in the front and uh, the shuttle tanker in the, uh, on the behind. So it will be taking the cargo, cargo back to the shore. Use of the FPSOs has the potential to improve the industry's capabilities of developing oil and gas reserves so deep that they either challenge or exceed existing deep water production techniques and transportation systems. Deep water, when we are talking about it, is in the range of more than 200 meters. Now the exploration is going more than three kilometers. FPSOs generally are an amalgam of marine and uh, petroleum functions and therefore present many specialized challenges for those involved in their creation. Now you see this, partly it is a ship, Partly it is a processing, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a factory, you can see. So all types of engineering disciplines are involved in uh, this FPSO. FPSO are particularly effective in remote or deep water locations where seabed pipelines are not cost effective. FPSO eliminates the need to lay expensive long distance pipelines from the oil well to an onshore terminal. Now let's come to the uh, design objective. The overall aim is to develop a new method for systems reliability analysis of positioning system of single or tandem floating structures, including mooring line elements of different kinds, turret rotation system, thrusters, and energy supply system. So these are all the various um, uh, aspects of floating uh, FPSOs. Different failure modes, including ultimate and deterioration modes of components and progressive system failure will be considered. This is the answer to the question which was asked about the fatigue uh, matter. So this analysis of fatigue and uh, the deterioration system failure will be considered during the early stage of design of FPSOs. 
Now let's come to the various disciplines which are involved, the design disciplines which are involved in FPSOs. Of course, pipe work, steel work, equipment, cable, cable tray, HVAC, hangers and supports. Now comes uh, with the introduction of your uh, latest computer techniques, you can eliminate the clash detection and consistency che checking. Uh, you can generate the bill of materials. From the three-dimensional model, you can generate the two-dimensional models, two-dimensional drawings for construction. Then you can do a review model. And finally, you can uh, interface these three-dimensional models to working softwares, whichever softwares, uh, normal softwares you are using for many purposes. So let me just give you an idea how this model is generated. You, this, for example, a condenser, a, a group of engineers will be working on modeling a condenser and associated uh, structures. Once you generate this, you can uh, generate your isometric drawings uh, immediately. Similarly, uh, another group will be working on uh, HVAC systems. They are doing the ducting arrangements. Yet another group on pipes, routing, and hangers and supports. Another group on uh, various equipment modeling. Nowadays, uh, the, the various equipment, mod, uh, equipment manufacturers themselves are giving you three-dimensional models, so you don't have to model it separately. So once you have made this, uh, all these uh, disciplines separately, you are going to put all these models together into one uh, model, and that is called the composite GA. Now once you are having this composite GA, then you can find out the various clash, clashes. For example, you can see that there, there are two pipelines here. One pipeline is having a, a valve there underneath. And definitely there is a mistake in the design. You cannot operate that valve. So what you are doing is, during the design stage itself, you are creating a virtual space for the valve. So that any item, any discipline item which is passing through that virtual space will give a report saying that there is a clash. So once you are having this clash report, you can rectify the mistake in the three-dimensional model itself. So these clashes will arise once you are having the composite GA, when all the disciplines are put together. So once the model is frozen, three-dimensional model is frozen, then you can extract the two-dimensional construction drawings. For example, this is a, a drawing of, um, of a pipeline, and uh, all the bill of materials, whatever is required, is generated automatically. You see, previous uh, days, you know, I have done the FPSR project in uh, 1970, 70, 77, at that time I had to use hand uh, method to extract all the bill of materials, but nowadays this technology has already improved. Now let's look into the various uh, areas where you have to do the modifications. Starting from the forward region, you have got the accommodation and heli deck. Now, heli deck structure is an external structure which you have to design and then put it uh, near to the accommodation area. Then comes your turret area. Now that is the area where you need extensive structural modification because this turret structure and uh, this ship itself is rotating with respect to that uh, turret. Then comes your processing area. Uh, for example, water injection, separation, high pressure, compression, then uh, low pressure, compression, etc. is coming on the middle region of the FPSOs. Coming to the back, you will have power generation. Then there is a flare tower. The flare tower is for burning the gas. I am going to explain about it later. And then comes on the aft part, you will have an offloading platform. That is the platform from where you are going to, uh, um, to connect the, uh, the shuttle tanker by means of hose pipe. Now this is the general arrangement of, uh, of uh, uh, an FPSO which was uh, done in 10 years ago. Uh, this, this FPSO has got the turret at the forward region. And we had to make a turret structure itself to support the turret. And this was around uh, 600 tons. And uh, the forward region was extensively modified, including a FEM analysis was carried out. And you can see the heli deck. The helicopter uh, is on the aft part, heli and it is a cantilevered uh, helicopter, uh, heli, heli deck, because we don't have any space. The whole deck platform is fill, uh, full with uh, uh, processing uh, equipments. So we had to design a special uh, type of heli deck uh, which was actually uh, standing in the air. <laughs>